Hello, this is the beginning of module six, uh, which has to do with inventory. But a little housekeeping first. Uh, the link to the accounts receivable module five session and module six inventory uh, on YouTube, there are playlists for you um, on those sessions. They are in Blackboard under your announcements. You should have also received an email from me uh, with all of those links. Just a reminder, your accounts receivable and inventory homework are due December 22nd by noon. So I look forward to uh, getting those from you. Um, early holiday present for me, um, and I will return those to you in January into your mail bins. Also, we will have a session this Tuesday from 8 to 9 Atlanta time. And the, you notice that I have modified the uh, link in Adobe Connect that it's crossing 2 instead of crossing 1. So those are the housekeeping. Let's get started on inventory. When we look at inventory, we know that that is what companies either buy and then put a new price tag on and invite customers in to buy it to buy it from them, or the company will manufacture or make inventory. And here are some examples of inventory, and they all have their own uh, idiosyncrasies and problems. So how I would account for inventory such as jelly beans is very different from how I would account for inventory such as diamond rings. Diamond rings, I would use what's called the specific identification method, where I identify each and every diamond separately and count them separately. Same thing with jet planes or automobiles. We track them by their unique VIN numbers. Uh, whereas jelly beans, it's pretty much they all look alike, and so they're pretty easy to uh, track because uh, we just count them. We don't specifically identify them. Uh, other things that we can have in inventory is fish um, or bulbs or plants. Uh, we have problems with uh, produce because it spoils quickly. Um, what we do with uranium um, byproducts uh, from nuclear reactors are um, another issue as far as in, uh, inventory is concerned. Uh, pants, making unique uh, musical instruments is different, and even the U.S. Postal Service has inventory. It's called your mail. So how do we account for uh, inventory? key question here is how much does it cost? And generally inventory is valued at its original cost unless the price tag on that inventory has declined to less than the original cost and then we'll value inventory at the lower of the cost or the market. Now how we account for inventory is important uh, as far as our income taxes is concerned, as far as ratio analysis and our cash flow is concerned, uh, how many different types of inventory tracking systems we use uh, impacts our, our accounting costs, our, our keeping track of all that inventory, whether it's unique, whether it's in batches, how we account for it. There are some idiosyncrasies when we use LIFO or last in, first out to account for inventory. When we start liquidating the uh, what we call LIFO layers or the LIFO reserve, and there's also some other idiosyncrasies that I can impact my net income uh, from my inventory purchasing practices, whether I purchase a whole lot of inventory at the very end of the year or whether I don't. Also, um, it can impact your compensation bonuses. Uh, because if I can impact what the net income is, then possibly I could impact uh, the size of the bonus. Also, how I account for inventory will impact uh, debt covenants 
and also my stock price uh, because it can't, depending on the method I use, um, I can impact my ratio analysis. So those are some of the issues um, that face us with inventory. Inventory on the financial statements, this is Coca-Cola. There'll be one place on the income statement, it's called cost of goods sold or cost of sales. And one place on the income statement, which is in the current assets called inventories. Uh, for both of these, you need to have disclosures in your footnotes that tell a little bit more about the cost of goods sold in the inventory. So, notice that we have to say what the inventory consists of and whether it's um, products that we acquire from others or whether it's things we make ourselves. And if it's things we make ourselves, we'll have three kinds of inventory which are called raw materials or material inventory, work in process, and finished goods. We also have to show that our inventories are valued at the lower of cost or market, and the lower of cost or market is if the market uh, uh, declines below the original cost, then we will cost it at the market value. We also have to share our method for accounting for inventory flow. And in this case, notice that Coca-Cola uses average cost or the FIFO, first in, first out method. And they also tell you a little bit about it. So raw materials, work in process, and finished goods. Contrast that with Walmart, a large retailer, and you'll see that cost of sales is what Walmart calls it instead of cost of goods sold, is really the majority of the costs on that income statement um, that make the operating income possible. So how we account for that will have huge ramifications on that bottom line. On the balance sheet, you can see that inventories is pretty much uh, the major ingredient in current assets. Um, because what does Walmart do? It sells inventory or products to consumers. When I look at the cash flow statement for Walmart, notice that inventory will show up as in the operating section. And in this case, I can see that inventory from the beginning to the end of the year um, increased. So thus, our cash went down because more dollars were tied up in inventory. In Walmart's footnotes, again, lower of cost or market, and notice that Walmart uses LIFO for Walmart USA and for Sam's Club for the most part, but abroad, they use FIFO. And if you use LIFO, you have to disclose also uh, what we call the LIFO reserve or the LIFO um, difference between if I use LIFO to value ending inventory versus FIFO to value ending inventory. And notice that Walmart says that LIFO approximates FIFO, and the reason is, is Walmart is a big believer in just-in-time inventory and supply chain management, so it turns its inventory very, very quickly. Um, the reason I wanted to point out that FIFO is used internationally and that LIFO is used uh, in the U.S. is in the U.S. LIFO is uh, allowed, but abroad LIFO is not allowed as a method of uh, valuing inventory. So in the United States we really, really, really like LIFO, um, but abroad that is not allowed, so most other countries uh, inventory valuation is FIFO. More on that later in the lecture. Now, what do we include as cost? Cost includes the purchase price, your invoice, invoice price, plus any freight that you pay to get the inventory to you, less any returns, allowances, or discounts that you receive for quantity purchases or early payment. When we're talking about manufactured inventory cost, 
it includes the material costs, the labor costs, and overhead. And if you don't know what overhead is, here's a nice definition of overhead. It's basically all the other costs besides direct materials and direct labor that go into making the product that are directly traceable um, to the production process. When we look at the anatomy of uh, the T account known as inventory, we have to be aware of which are which a method we are um, valuing our inventory at. Are we using a perpetual method, which means we have computers and barcodes and RFID tags? In other words, they we can electronically scan and track our inventory through the process. If that's the case, we just need one inventory account, which is a current asset, and there we have the beginning inventory. We track what we buy, we track what we sell, the cost of the goods sold, we track the returns, to come up with the ending inventory. So at any moment in time, under a perpetual system, we should know what is in inventory. We should know physically what is there um, as well, and the accounting systems agree with those physical counts. Whereas if we don't have computers, RFID tags, or barcodes, periodic inventory is the way, and that's where we physically have to track our inventory. So notice that the inventory account, the current asset account, uh, only contains in it the beginning and ending inventory, which were determined because we physically took an inventory count and made the adjusting journal entry to get that physical count in as a current asset. During the period, we have an expense account known as purchases that tracks the buying, the returning uh, of inventory. Turning to the income statement, under perpetual, we have one account on the income statement known as cost of goods sold or cost of sales, and this is where the cost of all the items that we sell, whether we're using FIFO, LIFO, or average cost, periodic, or well, well, and the perpetual system show up in that account. Under the periodic approach, remember there's no computers, no barcodes, we have to compute cost of goods sold at the end of every period, and that's the beginning inventory per that physical count um, that shows up in the current asset, plus our net purchases, plus any freight costs that you incur to bring that inventory and get it ready for sale, gives us a subtotal known as the cost of goods available for sale. You'll hear me call that COGAS. Uh, subtract out the physical inventory that's there the last day of the year, ending inventory, and that gives us cost of goods sold, a computation. Notice under periodic, there's no account. Now we're going to turn and do some problems, so enjoy.